This channel is made possible by viewers like you. My viewers, subscribers, and patrons greatly help to keep this channel going. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for all of you. Please make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any uploads. And if you'd like to go the extra mile, please check out my Patreon page. For just a dollar a month, you'll get access to what I'm working on, previews of upcoming content, and even early videos, along with other tier options for those that are interested. Thank you, and now on to the video. The Yakuza and Like It Dragon games I think represent some of the very best we have within this industry. While I have not played or even beaten every entry, it is a series that when I dive into it, I'm always happy with what I find. Honestly, this is one of the series that's on my list to just sit down and play each one of them, take it in properly for each entry, rather than sort of pop in here and there to check out stuff, which is what I've kind of been doing for the last few years. While these games can be very lengthy, they always end up being time well spent. Plus, this series is such an interesting interesting set of titles that it's hard to describe to someone who's never played them. I have seen some describe Yakuza as Japanese GTA, but that would be a huge disservice for what these titles really are, and it's not really an accurate description as well. And even now, the majority of titles have been beat-em-up gameplay, with a few titles now switching to a turn-based battle model. And even with dipping my toe into Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, I find myself immediately just completely enjoying it. <laughs> Yakuza and Like a Dragon are important games to the medium. Something many of us gamers want all new titles to have is that they play great and work on launch day. It is almost expected seeing a new big title come out and have it not work or be fairly buggy for its launch. Yes, in many cases it does get fixed, and this type of stuff can honestly train much of us to wait just a few weeks or a month after the launch to really get all of it worked out and ironed out. Yakuza never seemed to be one of those games. It just comes out on a consistent basis, and when you look at the player reception around these games, it isn't about how the performance is lacking, but rather the discussion is about how awesome the title is, how engaging the story is, the fun gameplay, and a plentiful content that is packed within. Yakuza has definitely risen in going from a more niche title, to being something that is more known now, and it's retained that specialness that it's always had, especially as it's grown. The audience is bigger, but the games still have that high level of quality. Now going back to my other point, this is exactly what we gamers want for new titles, which is why it's important to check this series out, and if you like it, support it. I need to do better in this area myself, because anytime I play them, I feel like I fall in love with the style again and again. The same thing happened with me with Infinite Wealth, and at the very beginning of the game, I found that I was getting that high level of quality entertainment. <laughs> Now if this isn't obvious yet, I want to come out and say that I have not played the first title that made the switch from beat-em-up action to turn-based combat. At first, I thought it was kind of cool when I heard that the series was going to make this ship, but for that entry, it was going to star a new protagonist, and at the time, Kazuma's stuff was completed. So on the other hand, it seemed like a good opportunity to try something new. The developers have definitely earned enough credit and favor to try something like this with their audience. Now like I said, I never played the one that did this switch, but having dipped my toe with infinite wealth, the transition to turn-based combat from beat-em-up is awesome. Personally, I love both styles, and what is surprising is how turn-based combat fits like a glove and suits the series really well. Not everyone can make a switch like this and get it right, but these developers pretty much can do no wrong. They just know what they are doing. My brief time with the combat, I really like the turn-based combat. It's a nice mix of the more traditional, like a legacy JRPG, mixed with the active elements, like the active dodges, skills, and stuff like that. It keeps the player engaged in the moment, while also having different combat actions, while also trying to figure out your next move. And even based on the previews with Infinite Wealth, they seem to still incorporate some of those beat-em-up surprises along the way as well. Also, I love the cool nuances that you see even early on with how the turn-based combat weaves back into the traditional Yakuza action. 
action. For example, you can grab items in the environment and use them as weapons. This never got old in the prior titles, and it's just as cool here. I also like that you can knock enemies into each other. It's comical and awesome. Something else I really like is how this title is written. Again, I haven't played the last few games and spin-offs, but this acts as a sequel to Seven. And how the story is delivered, you can opt to just join in and have our hero reminisce about prior games. Even as someone just jumping into this title to try it out, I would even recommend to play the prior games as well. But either way, I do like the option that is here for players to decide if they want this to be their first one, and then you can get that background here as well. Now most of this video is about praising this game, the series, and developers, but there was something that happened related to Infinite Wealth that I hope doesn't turn into something that is seen with future releases. Infinite Wealth had a New Game Plus option. I love having this in most of my games. It can greatly extend a game out. Sometimes it's cool to just take all the stuff with you that you earned and bring it back with you on a new run through the story again. Nowadays you see this being patched in later on, but for Infinite Wealth they provided it through DLC. New Game Plus is not something you want to put behind behind a paywall, nor sell it like a feature to the game. This just feels scummy to do. It's like taking something that we used to have as free, and now for a new game it's being held back to get a little bit extra money out of the player base. My hope is that this was some bad publisher decision by Sega to see if they could get away with it, but slowly doing stuff like this to your player base will make them resent you for it, and these developers and games have built up a lot of goodwill over their life. Is it really worth destroying it over trying to squeeze a bit more out of your players? Honestly, if the publisher, even if this was a developer decision, wanted more money, then give the players meaningful, fun content. I am willing to pay for additional expansions and all of that if it's worth it. I think there is a better route than holding back features that feel like they should be part of the game. I hope this is something that does not continue with future titles. I really just want to speak on how the opening hour of this title effectively pulls the player in. Even as someone like me who hasn't played every one of these games, this game just looks good as well. Great visuals, performances, and how it's shot too. Normally I prefer English voice acting when available. This is a situation where I will probably keep the original audio on because the dub features YouTuber Yang Ya as Kazuma and he is absolutely horrible. He doesn't seem to have much range at all, nor does he really fit the character he is voicing. A little background for me is that I start I started with Yakuza back on the PS2, and that was all dubbed in English. It did have some goofy lines read by some of the NPCs, but I actually really liked the guy that did Kazuma for that game. So from that I had an idea of someone who could fit the character while they were playing it, but Yong is not good for that now. Maybe he's suited for another character within the game. Outside of this, I love the opening part, where there is a disagreement with a former Yakuza member, and he just wants a job, and Kazuga ends up helping him out. But in series fashion, it unfolds in an engaging way, some humor, and of course, fighting. But as my first experience with the new protagonist, it pretty much shows me what kind of man he is and makes me immediately like him. Stuff like this is the kind of stuff that makes me smile and really love these games, because it has some good writing to them. I really enjoyed my time that I spent with this title, and I plan to fully dive into this one at some point in the future, but I think I'm going to play some of the prior games maybe before coming back to this one, maybe even doing the Feudal Japan 1. Either way I know, and like I said before, a game's introduction is very important, and Infinite Wealth already knows how to deliver on that. On that note, I should say that you should probably check this one out. Have you played any entry within this series? Have you tried Infinite Wealth? Let me know your thoughts on it in the comments down below. If you're interested in being notified of new videos, please hit the subscribe button and bell. And if you would like to support the channel and get early access to content, please check out my Patreon. All of the links will be at the end of this video and within the description. And thank you very much for watching.